Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I know you are gonna love this one. It's pretty cold, so we're not gonna be out here very long, but I think it's a very important episode because I was out here getting all my arborvitaes pruned up, and I figured I'd bring you all along because so many of you have been asking how our living fence has been doing. And so, uh, the, in short, our living fence has been doing great. The trees survived winter, they're looking incredible. They're definitely gonna just explode in growth this year. For those of you that are new, that don't know what our living fence is, it's basically 35 arborvitaes. Turn you guys around here so you can see. It's 35 arborvitaes that make up a giant living fence. And that fence was put up because we were not allowed to put up an actual fence due to us living on a corner lot. And so we said, well, you know what? We need some type of protection from wind and noise and just privacy in general. So let's put up a living fence because there's nothing on the books about that being uh, not allowed. And we checked with our city and they said, yep, you can do it. So we planted arborvitaes instead. But in planting arborvitaes, we, uh, we kind of signed ourselves up for uh, a yearly maintenance schedule that um, I was not really aware of. And upon planting, uh, the the arborist that came out to plant them said, um, "Are you, you know, are you able to maintain your trees?" And I said, "Well, I mean, I'm, 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 you know, I'm able to maintain them. You know, it's not necessarily like I I can't come out and prune the trees." And he goes, "Well, 35 is a lot of trees to maintain. I just want you to know." <laughs> And so uh, I kind of just kept putting it off and putting it off and putting it off because it was a lot of work to uh, keep the trees well pruned. And so finally I said, you know what? I got to get out here and do it. So that's what today's video is on is because I got to get these things maintained because arborvitaes are not like a normal tree. A lot of people think of them as just a normal evergreen like a Christmas tree, um, like any pine tree. They are an evergreen, but they're actually not like a pine tree whatsoever they will actually fork in multiple different locations producing what we call leaders. Leaders are a main growing stem and a pine tree will always have one leader. If that leader is broke, what will happen is it will forever be kind of just that height. It just looks odd. It looks like it's lost its top. But the thing with arborvitaes is they will select a new leader if the top one is broke. So that's why if you lose a leader, much like this one, we actually lost this one last summer when it was really hot and really dry. We just keep letting it survive because the bottom is still alive. It's gonna produce a new leader and that new leader will continue to grow. And so eventually it'll look like nothing was ever really missing. And so um, they are nice in that fact that if you lose a leader, they'll continue to grow and you don't have to remove the whole tree. Whereas you'd have to remove the whole tree if you don't want a goofy looking pine tree. So in that is kind of a blessing and a curse. You know, we get our living fence. It looks really great. It fills out nice because pine trees get super tall. They get super large. Arborvitaes tend to stay a little smaller, a little more manageable, yet they fill out and they can be planted close together where within a couple years, two or three years at most, these are going to be completely all filled together and it'll be just like a fence, um, only it's going to be beautiful. And I, to be honest, I'm actually happier with this than, than say, a, a wood fence. Um, and so with that, like I said, does come kind of a curse uh, because um, it requires some maintenance and it's time to do that maintenance. So I've been out doing that uh, today, but I wanted to show you all how to prune your arborvitaes to maintain them because what will happen over time is if they're neglected, what will happen is those leaders will all continue to grow. It'll have three, four, five different leaders that it will select and they'll basically grow like all new arborvitaes. The whole thing will continue to grow. And what will happen is the center will get very crowded. And that does, that does two things. It allows for all the needles that don't have access to sun. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this tree here was left a little bit too long. And what happened was the center completely died out. And that's because these are needles but they're also leaves. These actually will photosynthesize and the tree will not prioritize something that's not going to be creating energy, so it actually drops them. And what happens is the center will begin to become so uh, clustered up with all the different growing leaders that it will die off in the center. And this will happen naturally. You'll always have some of that because there's just such a dense tree. However, if you continue to let them grow, what will happen is they'll become very sparse and then uh, what will happen is they'll continue growing, 
but yet they'll become top heavy because the center of gravity is right here. Okay, the tree's center of gravity is right here and these are off center. And so if you have a heavy snow or uh, you know a rain or something like that, these will begin to fall when they get really large and top heavy. Right now they're not that big of a deal and to be honest, this is actually pretty standard um, for, a, for an arborvitae to have these these leaders about two and a half to three feet in length but any longer than that and any wider than that they really just become they begin falling everywhere and you've probably seen trees like that that are 10 15 feet tall and as soon as a large snow comes or heck even just sometimes they get so heavy just growing on their own just the weight of the needles will begin to pull them over and then they just look unmanaged and messy and nothing looks worse than uh than just messy um landscaping so I'm going to show you really quick how to prune these so they uh, will continue to grow. We'll, we're going to select them to one main growing stem so that they continue to grow in a nice upward pattern and you can prune them without making them look even goofier because you prune them wrong and they'll look very patchy and spotty and if, uh, and if you prune them correctly, it's going to allow them to breathe, it's going to allow the needles to have good access to sunlight, it's going to keep a good center of gravity, and it's also going to focus energy growing upwards instead of just growing outwards and outwards and outwards until you just have a big messy mess upon your on your hands so um all right so let's go to a tree that i have not yet pruned i just got this one all pruned up here so here's a tree that i've not yet pruned and as you can see this has got just a super long leader here the main growing leader here and it's also got one hanging out over on this side and it's just gotten to be too crazy and you've really lost that nice uh kind of conical shape that's uh that's looked for with arborvitae so what we want to do is we want to pick a branch we want to obviously prune this main leader here because we want to select the tallest main leader to continue growing but we don't want to just hack off anywhere here because it will leave a really open gap and so what we want to do is we want to prune down low enough to where there's a long branch pointing up and you want to prune on a 45 degree angle to mask to mask the the uh the needles or the branch of needles going upwards that will kind of hide that gap created i'll show you what i'm talking about up close all right so we got our leader here and what we want to do is we want to come down far enough to where it's not going to leave a huge gap still you want it to be really close to the tree so see there's a there's a large gap here large gap here it gets narrower and narrower and narrower and we've gotten down here where there's almost no gap at all that's where we want to prune and we're going to come back here, we're gonna find some, some of these branches here that are coming off at a 45 degree angle. And that 45 degree angle is really key because it's going to hide our cut. So when we cut here, we're going to cut, these are pretty thick, pretty thick for, for this size branch, but it'll work. So when we cut here, you'll notice that there's not as much of a gap created because these branches here at a 45 degree angle will grow up and this will then have sunlight that will fill out and it won't leave just a gap here permanently this will fill out really nicely so there you go hopefully you all enjoyed hopefully you learned something new it's definitely something that i think a lot of people can implement and should implement because I've seen a lot of really ugly arborvitaes out there and if yours is one of them, there's at least hope to make it look better and, and to make it healthier as well. So I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. Make sure to like this video. It definitely helps the channel grow when you like the video because it sends the video around to other people that have not yet seen it. So that is huge for us. And I do hope that you share it with a friend as well that might have some ugly arborvitaes. It's a nice way of kind of telling them that their arborvitaes need a little help without actually uh, <laughs> without actually telling them that. So uh, I'll let the, I'll I'll be the bearer of bad news. You just be the good friend and uh, share this video with them. So as always, I hope you all enjoyed. Hope you learned something new, and we'll catch you all in the next episode. This is Luke from the Mi Gardener Channel, reminding you to grow big or go home. And we'll catch you all later. See ya. Bye.